This is the Italian Citizenship Podcast, hosted by Marco Permonian and Rafael Di Furia. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. We are back at it again with Italian attorney Marco Permonian, live in the flesh. How are you doing, man? Good, how are you? Good, I'm doing great, thank you. Of course, we are still here in Verona recording a little bit more for you. And in this episode, we wanted to do another Q&A with Marco to ask him some questions that you guys have had to pass those along directly to you. And on the episode, three tips for gathering documents for Italian citizenship by descent, episode 117, Anna H, YouTube user, asked uh, that we mentioned about that the documents should be recent. However, uh, are documents that are two years old that have been apostilled acceptable? The rule is that the documents need to be apostilled when you submit them for a citizenship application. So there is nothing in the law that says how old the documents need to be or when they need to be issued or apostilled. So in theory, any document that has been apostilled can be used for a citizenship by descent application. Now, the challenge that you may face with older documents is that they can no longer be apostilled because in the US at least the uh, apostille is issued. It, it's an, it's an, some sort of authentication that is issued or affixed in, to the document by the Secretary of State in the state where the document was issued. And the Secretary of State will basically use a registry of signatures that includes all of the signatures of the state registrars, county clerks, or anybody who can sign a document in a certain state. And so if they no longer have on file the signature of somebody who signed the vital record that you want to get apostille, they might not be able to issue an apostille. So in short, if your document, if your vital record document, like a birth certificate, was issued a long time ago, years ago, you might not be able to get it apostilled because the Secretary of State might no longer have the signature of this, the official, the public official who signed the document on file. But to answer your question, once the apostille has been attached to the document, so the document has been authenticated through an apostille, then it's valid and it can be used for a citizenship by descent application. Now, if you have a document that you apostilled years ago, so say you have your own birth certificate, which was apostilled 10 years ago. So a birth certificate, which was issued 11 years ago and apostilled 10 years ago. In theory, that's a valid document. It has legal value. You can use it for a citizenship by descent application. However, the consulate or the entity that is processing your citizenship by descent application might give you a hard time just because the document is too old, because the information included in the document might have changed over time so it's always safer to have documents and apostille documents i should say that were issued no more than a couple of years ago well thank you marco for answering that question and uh, just to go over to another question from episode 128 from youtube user conan nyc basically just in short they're asking about the permesso di soggiorno for, say, a spouse of an Italian citizen or even an individual, I guess, who would have to apply for Italian citizenship by descent in Italy uh, because they would also need the permesso di soggiorno. What are the travel restrictions on traveling, say, within the European Union or to go outside of the European Union for an individual who is waiting for their permesso? So the application for a permesso di soggiorno can be filed quite easily. It is normally filed through the post office because the postal office is the um, office that was that is appointed by the government to receive uh, applications for residency permits and once you submit the application for a spousal permit or a uh, permit for people who are awaiting citizenship generally speaking you receive a receipt that allows you to travel back and forth within the EU or from Italy back home if you're American so uh, to the US and with that receipt you can travel back and forth even if you don't have the actual residency permit which looks like a plastic card which will be sent to you through the mail uh, but until that happens you can use your receipt um, to travel in the eu or from outside of italy into italy now keep in mind that as a residency permit holder you can only stay in the other european country different from italy for up to three months in a uh, six months period of time so basically your residency permit only applies to italy and doesn't allow you to live without restrictions in the rest of the european union very interesting and so 
a person does have some flexibility when they are on this permissivity. So, Jonah, that's good to know and good for uh, news for people who are going to be coming and making that application here in Italy. But to move on to one of the shorts that was uploaded, uh, what if someone has done a lot of research but couldn't find their documents, whatever. So, for example, somebody actually left a comment on that uh, YouTube user, Sharona L., and they are finding themselves at a standstill with their husband's um, citizenship because they are unable to find out if his grandfather even naturalized when they came to the country. So if a person is unable to find out this information, how do they do that research or where do they need to look and how would that, this problem, uh, how would you get over this problem? So the naturalization date of your Italian ancestor that you want to use to make your claim is a crucial piece of information, meaning that you can only apply for Italian citizenship by descent if your uh, Italian ancestor who was born in Italy was not naturalized before the birth of the next person in the Italian line who was born outside of Italy. So that's a key piece of information to have. And as part of our free initial assessment, we do try to find out that information for our clients free of charge and obligation. So we tell them, if the most important requirement is even met before they start the application process. And generally speaking, we're able to find that information quite easily, but of course we are uh, trained uh, professionals and researchers, so we know where to find it. But if you are uh, somebody who is not a uh, genealogical professional researcher, how can you find out that information? Well, there are several websites that you can use like ancestry.com or familysearch.org or other important databases that basically include very well kept genealogical records, including naturalization records, which will indicate the, the date of naturalization of your Italian ancestor. Also, if you can't find it there, you might want to contact USCIS, so the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. They have a genealogy department, but they're quite slow in processing requests. We're talking about a year just to receive naturalization records wow. right now. The National Archives are a little bit quicker, so they release naturalization records as long as you provide them with all the information, of course, um, in a matter of a couple of months. So you might want to try that. Also, some courts in the U.S. have uh, records of naturalization. So you might also want to try that to see if and when your ancestor became naturalized, which, like I just mentioned, is uh, a crucial piece of information. And just for clarity, the naturalization process was a three-step process. So there was a declaration of intention which was filed at the start meaning you uh, showed your intention to become a U.S. citizen and then a petition of nat for naturalization needed to be filed and then the petition itself was either approved or denied and if it was approved you would receive a certificate of naturalization and what counts is the date in which your ancestor was admitted to become a citizen of the U.S. meaning when the petition was uh, accepted no matter when the naturalization process, which is what I just described, uh, began. Very, very interesting, Monaco. And thank you again for ask, answering that question from uh, one of our viewers. Uh, and so actually, just to continue on, unfortunately, I don't have exactly which episode this was from, but YouTube user at Daisy9910 left a comment that I actually got me really interested and really kind of curious about something. Uh, they were wondering if citizenship at some point might be possible to obtain through DNA and that it could be very interesting to open up some doors that way. At least that was the rough idea from the comment. But to kind of rephrase and reframe things, how come it is not possible for an individual to be able to make a claim for Italian citizenship through, like, say, some sort of uh, 20, uh, 21 and what ancestry.com blood test or uh, mouth swab test or anything that could show from a genetic level that the person is Italian. Where does this all come from? Well, the law about citizenship by descent is very clear. It's not about showing that you have uh, Italian blood in you and the, the blood relationship itself is not enough to be able to apply for citizenship by descent. That's why you have to procure all of the documents of birth and marriage for the individuals in your Italian line up to the Italian-born ancestor, you have to show a direct link between yourself and your Italian ancestor who was born in Italy. But not only that, because like I said, the blood relationship is not 
enough, you have to show that your Italian-born ancestor was able to transfer their citizenship onto their child. And that kind of connects this to what I was saying before, that the naturalization of your ancestor would have interrupted the transfer of citizenship because it would have caused the loss of Italian citizenship for your ancestor. And if that happened before the birth of the next person in the Italian line, the transfer of citizenship from your ancestor down to you would have would not have happened because it would have been interrupted almost at the start on the other hand if your ancestor wasn't naturalized ever or until after the birth of their child then the ancestor itself would have been able to pass their citizenship to their child who was then able to pass it to their child who was able to pass it to their child and so on until the applicant so you have to show this unbroken line of descent with no interruptions in the transfer of citizenship. Um, and this is all according to the Jure Sanguinis principle, meaning a principle based on uh, which the citizenship is passed to the child at the time of the birth of the child, as long as one of the parents was an Italian, meaning didn't lose Italian citizenship by naturalization in the foreign country before the child was born. And the Jure Sanguinis principle comes from the times of the Roman Empire, so it's a very, very old law or principle of law. Now, the DNA test that was referenced in the question can actually be used or useful for a different purpose, meaning if you want to establish a link between you and one of your parents in, uh, who is in the Italian line, but you were never formally recognized as their child, you could have a judge in the US or in Italy but more often in the US, uh, acknowledge or declare uh, through a that through a DNA test, you can be declared as the child of that specific person. So if you can't prove the relationship between you and one of your parent, uh, you might have a judge establish that relationship based on a DNA test. But that's the only way that a DNA test can be used, not really just to claim citizenship through a distant ancestor. Well, Marco, that's actually very interesting. I have a friend who is maybe roughly in that situation and they know that information actually on a personal level would be potentially quite interesting to them. Um, but just to move on to uh, another question from a YouTube user at Alan FC uh, on episode number 85, how much do you need to retire to Italy? And this individual is asking about the elective residency visa. If your pension is only half of the required income, would they consider assets amounting to say six or seven figures? Is it just one aspect of what you have coming in or is it a more kind of global picture of what you have within your assets? The official rules are very clear. The consulate, which is the entity where you submit the application for the visa, needs to see that you have stable passive income and by income uh, they mean a flow of money that you know gets wired into your account every month so in theory the global um, worth of your assets should not be taken into consideration no matter how big that is now i have seen uh, clients though being approved even if they didn't meet the minimum required uh, amount for the monthly passive income meaning around three thousand dollars per month is required to apply for the elective residency visa so these people they didn't have passive income equal to at least three thousand per person because maybe they had a pension who was slightly lower or other kind of investments that um, generated a lower amount per month however they had a very large uh, amount of savings and uh, that was exceptionally taken into consideration by the consulate and the visa was eventually approved uh, they gave them a hard time because according to the consulate the savings that you have or other financial means that are not passive income could be spent very easily and you could find yourself not being able to support yourself in Italy without being a weight for the Italian government. However, if the amount of savings is that large that allows you to live comfortably for years, for the years ahead, then I've seen the consulate making quite a few exceptions, even if the person didn't have the minimum amount of money required in terms of passive income. It's very interesting. So it does sound like there are some 
possibilities and maybe some flexibility for individuals who are looking for ways to make some of these dreams reality. But just to move on to one last question for this episode from episode 132, Italian versus Irish citizenship by descent up to a great grandfather, that this individual uh, cat, uh, you to user at cat1963, left uh, the comment, they currently have all the certified documents and all translated uh, requirements and all of the apostilles. The problem is that they've been trying to get an appointment to send the documents to Los Angeles consulate and within one minute of requesting the prenota, there's a banner that says all appointments are taken and then trying again the next day. And this has been going on since March of 2024. Uh, this individual saved all of their screenshots. So the, the question then becomes, would it be faster to just try and apply through the Italian courts under the 1948 rule, uh, even though their father was born in 1913 and the grandfather didn't naturalize until 1918? The answer is, in my opinion, yes. So the consulates have been giving people a hard time by not releasing appointments as they should be. And so there are, in fact, very few appointments. It's extremely challenging to... Um, secure an appointment at the consulate. So applying for citizenship through the courts is a very smart way to proceed, in my opinion, because uh, I don't see the situation improving. So if you basically don't get lucky and are able to get an appointment, you might find yourself in a situation where you have to wait for months, years for an appointment. Nobody knows how long. Now, I've seen situations improving in certain consulates over time nobody knows if the situation in la will actually improve or get worse so at least if you submit your case to the court you can get your case on the docket and your case will be heard you don't know when but at least it will be heard at some point and you know based on the court it could be very soon or you might have to wait a little bit longer but in total i believe that the processing time in the court is actually shorter on average that the processing time and the consulate so in my opinion it's very advantageous to use the court versus the consulate and these uh, court cases are actually being approved now um, the situation of that was described by the person who left a comment is a situation where the ancestor became naturalized while their child was a minor and I've said this in other episodes that some courts some judges might have a problem with this situation it's a minority of judges so Generally speaking, these situations are approved, they are okay, but it's always better to check with an attorney where your case is going to be filed because that will determine also your chances of success, which like I said, generally speaking, they're very high, but they could be a little bit lower depending on the court that you end up having to use. Well, Marco, I have to say that one was especially fascinating to hear about and really to, to hear the ins and outs of that particular situation and what might be possible for them. But of course, if anybody is needing help to get their citizenship, how can they get in contact with you and your team? People can contact us through our website, italiancitizenshipassistance.com, or give us a call at our numbers on the website. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, if you're interested in more about getting Italian citizenship or even Italian real estate, make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel as well as the audio only podcast. But of course, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, that means you're subscribed to not only this podcast, the Italian citizenship podcast, but you're also automatically subscribed to the Italian real estate podcast or also, if you're interested in more about life abroad and living abroad as a dual citizen expat, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel and audio only podcast that you can find on YouTube it's through youtube.com slash Furia, or you can search for not your average globetrotter on YouTube, Google, or your favorite podcasting platform of choice. But of course, we have been here again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian here in the beautiful Verona, Italy. I'm Raffaele Di Furia, and we'll see you all next time. Later. Thank you.